How's everyone doing today? Great. Ready to go. How are you been? Doing fine. Doing fine. Just let me get everything started here. Yeah. I, don't know, I think we should go ahead and get started. I don't know if everyone's logged in or not. Well, my name is Christopher Washington. It's nice meeting everyone. Uh, I just uh, want to uh, say thank you for taking the time to uh, come and uh, listen listen to me speak a little bit today. Um, <clears throat> hope all is going well. Hope your families are well. Um, I wanted to, I'm trying to wait a little bit because I still see we still have quite a few people that are logging in. Okay. Okay, I apologize. I'm reaching in respect for that. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're going to get started today and we'll talk about retreating. Uh, you train hard, you practice hard, and you're ready. Game day is approaching and then nothing. Coronavirus comes in, everything we, as we know is is, is at a halt. Um, we were, we're, we're in a battle, ready, but forced to retreat. This is like a season ending injury. Uh, that's what I wanna compare it to. It is the same in the sense as what happens when you're angry, discouraged and lost. You ask yourself why, but this is the worst. This, this is the worst because no, <clears throat> no matter how hard you train, regardless of how closely you adhere to the physical therapy, you have no, you have no idea when you will compete again. All right. Uh, just like, <clears throat> just like you were not in control of preventing the injury, you are not in control now. All right. Uh, the retreat was involuntary, but <clears throat> but you are doing this time out. It, it entirely it, it entirely is entirely up to you. The situation, the situation will be, will end some from 
the normal from the normal will happen and as always we'll resume we will resume bear with me here a minute I'll, I'll calm down here in a minute all right i'm just fired up so i'm gonna just relax myself you do not want to get caught flat-footed or flat -footed. I'm sorry, say that again? Okay. You do not want to get caught with flat feet or foggy brain at game time. I recommend you take this opportunity to recharge. Here are some ideas. You know what the research says. Exercise, exercise can reduce stress and may help depression and anxiety. Continue your conditioning and training. Sure you will have to adapt your routines, but cardio, cardio weights and eating healthy do not require a gym or a coach's nagging, okay? Get your teammates on the video conference and exchange ideas on home workouts, favorite videos. In fact, conduct virtual team meetings, including reviewing playbooks and game film. Recharge, learn, learn something new. Again, research tells us learning new things is good for the brain. New skills stimulates new neurons and, con and connections. Sign up, sign up for that online class you've been intending to take. Tackle that do-it-yourself project. Listen. <clears throat> Listen to the pod podcast series that caught your attention. Read a book, learn a language, pick up a musical instrument, or get a jump start on the math or the science class you are dreading next semester. Life happens and we lose contact with people we care about. Now is a good time to reconnect. That's right, studies show that good relationships with family and friends are good for the health, for our health. Go through, go through your photos and call, not text. Do not text, call that friend or, or neighbor from the old neighborhood. Host a family reunion, video conference, play games, share stories, and exchange photos. It is possible nothing you have tried thus far has elevated the stress level, has decreased your stress level or frustration that you're, that you're experiencing. Recharging sounds good in theory, but let, let's be honest, my suggestions may not help either. But what we, but what we learned when we, when we were small still holds true. There is no I in team. In closing, I wanna, I wanna say, in closing, I want to have all answers. Do not, do not ignore your feelings. If you are struggling, do not remain silent. Do not try to do it alone. Reach out. Dr. Diversity organized this meeting to assure everyone that we are going to make it through together together being the key word, that we are not alone. And most importantly, it is absolute, absolutely okay 
to reach out for assistance. I want to keep this part short and sweet. I want to thank you for your time. Now I would like to open the floor for discussion and any questions that you may have. So the floor is now open for questions. Excuse me. Yes. I have a problem with drowning out the noise. You having a problem with, with, with the noise right now? Uh, with No, with uh, not letting uh, too many things come into my head. Okay. You know, so I try to cut out the, a lot of the political stuff, a lot of the, reduce it to a manageable level so that you won't get freaked out over it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it doesn't interfere with the recharging, so so to speak. And this uh, is what, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's a problem for me personally, because okay. uh, uh, it interferes with everything. I like what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but when I start looking at all this stuff that's going on, I don't want to cover it specifically. Well, but uh, I don't want to talk about it specifically. Okay. Because I, I think we all have uh, issues with, with the things that are going on. Uh, but uh, it tends to get me off track. Okay. So I'm trying to reduce it down to man manageable levels and not be too out of the uh, loop. Okay. Well, it seems you and I, you and I share... Uh the problem that I had, and I realized it was really simple, because we know in the evenings, six, 10 o'clock, whenever your news comes on, and throughout the day, they're going to inundate you with different specials talking about the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Get away from the television. Yeah. Call some friends. Go do something else. Get out of the house. Well, not get out of the house. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> <laughs> Not get out of the house, but yeah, get away from get away from the television for a while. Okay. Call call some friends and family and just see how they're doing. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah I'll do that at six. I'll just cut it all out. Yeah. Just, I don't need to see stuff after six. That's true. It'll still be the same. They'll be doing the same thing tomorrow morning when you wake up. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, thanks a lot. That's no, thank you. Another. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more about your background and your, um, I mean, are you a coach? Are you a faculty member? Are you a researcher? And what is your areas? And, and then just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay. Well, I'm a retired, I'm a retired player uh, from the NFL, played for seven years from uh, 1984 to 1990. Uh, I was lucky enough to play with the San Francisco 49ers, won the Super Bowl, um, <clears throat> played some other sports. I played for seven years and I had to retire because I had 22, about 22 surgeries. So I figured it's time maybe do something else. So uh, I did that and um, after a while, I started a mentoring program of my own in, uh, in San Diego, uh, where I would go in and talk with, work with high school students, high school students on goal setting and self-esteem. Um, what else? Um, and I coached for about, I did coaching for five, five, six years at the high school level uh, with football players. and. Uh, Again, because I felt I still had a little bit to give, I enjoyed it. It worked out well. And uh, then after a few years of that, I decided to just, to just, to just take it easy. Um, and as a matter of fact, I just reminded about my wife because I just start, I'm just starting to 
uh, starting another coaching uh, job at, uh, <clears throat> out here. So, um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I enjoy that. I enjoy teaching. So um, I think, let me know if I answered your question. If not, I can ask you some more. <laughs> Oh, I guess yeah. My education, yes. I um, went to Iowa State as undergrad, um, and after I got drafted from Iowa State, and after I retired, I went back to went back to school and got my bachelor's in organizational behavior, got my master's in um, uh, com uh, in, in, uh, in psychology. Uh, and then I. Again, once again, started working with, uh, as I said, uh, uh, high school, high school, uh, and uh, college students, mostly high school students, or just preparing for life after high school and filling filling that uh, um, void between the two. So. Great, thank you. You're welcome. How do you feel your degree in psychology helped you as a coach? It helped me understand the, the, uh, the doubts that would creep into the minds of the players, how simple it would be to just have a conversation with them, make sure that they knew that there was always someone there for them to talk to. Um, it, um, it was, it also helped me to understand, um, as I said, things that I was going through at that age. Um, you know, but I think it helped me mainly because it, it, it allowed me to relate to the students regardless of the age. Um, as I said, I started out with high school students and then I eventually moved up to uh, older students in college, but uh, the high school students are really, uh, they really test you. So I really, but I enjoyed it and uh, it was worthwhile. And I, and I'm, I'm glad that I, I took part in that. Yeah. When I got, oh, go ahead. Is Hello. It, anyone else? Hello. Uh, yes, your name please? Tamara. Mar, okay. How are you doing today? Nice to meet you. Meet you, okay. What about some uh, relaxation methods or tools or strategies for stress management? I'd like to know more about some. If you, as a coach, if you think meditation, uh, imagery, or simply a quiet time could help athletes to manage uh, stress or anxiety? Well, all of those things that you just mentioned are very good, uh, depending on what their interest is. Um, yes, I, I think uh, calisthenics or, or, or uh, martial, martial arts or just uh, and listening to music, uh, it just depends on what works for you and uh, um, I think I think there's uh, there's there, there's quite a few we'd be here on the phone we'd be on here for a while if I'm to try to mention everything but <clears throat> I think just start just starting starting there uh, would be a good would be a good idea uh, again calisthenics. Uh, Meditation. Uh, there are num there are a number of things that would probably help in that situation. And then, do you think coaches should uh, should encourage athletes to go that way, go that that road? Because uh, sometimes I don't think coaches really encourage athletes to uh, to find some silence to go inside. Instead of being always outside the house, you know. Well, not at the, at the young age. You really won't. You really won't see it because their their minds are still developing. So, 
know, you usually don't see it until after. Well, sometimes you see it in middle school, you see it in high school. Uh, some of the, some of the coaches uh, uh, will use uh, different different uh, methods to help the students calm down, get them to focus, uh, get them to realize what's <clears throat> what's important, what their limits are or that they have no limits and just, uh, and, and just go from there. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you so much. So mm -hmm. much. I have a question. Yes. Um, are you all part of any coaching federation? Is there any certification that goes along with y'all's uh, background or how does that work? Yes, yes. yes. There, there are certifications that have to be taken care of first and coaches around around the country have uh, gone through and taken the certifications and, and uh, <clears throat> taking the time to make sure that they're able and qualified to uh, help in those different situations that arise with students with high school students and we know and we know that there, there are a lot of those situations that come up over time uh, we don't, we don't know everything. So sometimes you have to say, I don't know and recommend someone else for them to go see that maybe more qualified to help that particular situation. Hey, Mr. Washington, how are you? I'm doing fine, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So I've been coaching MMA athletes for the last five years and we work pre-performance rituals, routines, things like that. But there are times when an athlete will have an adrenaline dump or just be flat before competition. Do you have any suggestions for how to either alleviate or manage adrenaline before competition so they don't burn out too quickly before they go compete? You know, they'll, they'll feel their arms are heavy or their limbs are heavy or things like that. And we'll be able to maximize the can overcome this uh, quarantine at this uh, getting them, getting them to come, get, getting their full attention for a minute, get in front of them, get their full attention and get them to relax and go through some go through some stretching exercises and deep breathing exercises that always seem to help myself and other players because we do have times when you just you, you freak out and you, you you lose your breath and you you think you're about to pass out but you're not you just need to try and calm them down and there there's, there are other ways as well you of course take them off the field for the moment but just get them to sit down, isolate, relax for a minute, take deep breaths. And once they're in control of their breathing and possibly let them, let them go back out on the field and just keep an eye on them and make sure they don't hyperventilate and, uh, and, just, and just go from there. Thank you. You're welcome. In kind of conjunction with what he was saying, uh, there might be a reason for the yeah. drop in the adrenaline that has nothing to do with the sport itself. Yes. So maybe check in with your athlete, your student, your child about is there something going on that maybe now it's hitting you now that there's another stressor instead of just it? Yeah. Like make yeah. sure your athlete's okay psychologically or maybe your athlete needs to talk and maybe this game it would be better if they did sit out i mean there's a lot of things that would go into that right yes i totally agree with what you just said yeah providing context i'm not normally there with my my athletes like i said it's uh mma fighting so you know they can't really walk out of the fight they, they get in front of that fight and then they come out and and sometimes they're just like i said they're they got to do it. They, they want to leave. They want to escape or get out of there sometimes, even though we've worked mental conditioning drills, breath work, physiological states, and anchoring. Mm -hmm. Didn't know if you had any shortcuts of like, hey, this is a way to get a second wind or to re-engage to, to unlock peak performance. Yes. And I, there have been many times I've hyper, hyperventilated on the, on the field, and I learned to just find one person or one, one obstacle, one object just to focus on really quick, take some deep breaths um, and just 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 stand there for, for a minute or so. Well, you don't have that much time, but stand there and just try to uh, 
calm myself down. If I realize I'm hyperventilating, then yes, y'all feel. But if not, just take your time. You can count. You can count to 10, 20. Uh, you can take deep, just take deep breaths in and out of the chest. And um, there, there, there are a lot of others that, uh, a lot of other techniques that you can use as well. Um, but that would be the main thing if you realize, if you find that you can't calm down as quickly as you want to, and we never really calm down as quickly as we want to, but as you start to calm down, if it's helping you or not, and then take it from there. Either step out of the game for a little bit, or you realize what's going on and go back in and continue to play as long as you can maintain your focus. Oh, okay. Let uh, I can let me give you a point. Um, I had I got I got I had injuries when I played uh, professional football. And I, I broke my fibula, and uh, um, I was unable to. I was unable to do what I loved doing, um, and it took a long time for me to to calm down. After after I had those injuries, I had I would have uh, nightmares and and different things that I would go through at night, um, and it, and then just went on, it went on for a while. Um, <clears throat> It took me a while to, to admit I had a problem because as a, as a professional player, you don't like to always listen. You don't like, like to always admit that you have issues that you can't control because you think you control everything, but you don't really control anything. And once you admit that to yourself and go in and find someone that you can talk to and share those feelings with, they help you get yourself together and you, be, and you learn to focus once again and hopefully go on with the rest of your your career. Next question. Yeah, I have a question. Or if you have anything you want to share. Yes. Um, so I was wondering how do you deal with not being able to compete? Like you train as hard as you can, but you can't compete. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Well, you have to try. <clears throat> That's when you have to go out on the limb and try and try other things because you've been so successful and so <clears throat> you've been so successful for so long. You have to learn and try and trust in yourself and believe that you can succeed at doing other things. Uh, you have you have to do that sometimes, or you'll sit you'll sit around and and you'll be uh, <clears throat> bored is not the word, but it's the only thing that comes to mind at the moment. But uh, you have to just you have to try different things. Again, maybe reaching out reaching out to a younger student, reaching out to an older student, reaching out to an to a uh, relative, and just talking to someone. Sometimes talking to other people about different things helps you overcome what you're overcome or deal with what you're dealing with, what you're having problems with. And you don't realize it until you actually get in the conversations and, and, and start going. So, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure there are many, many others again. I'm just talking from the, uh, <clears throat> the experiences that I've had and most of them have been uh, talking talking to someone for a while and then realizing, well, we can take, well, we can take care of this doing ABC or, or uh, I can recommend them to someone else. So uh, there, there are a lot, there's so many ways to uh, get yourself, to get not only your self-esteem back, but to get your confidence back. I think for me, if I'm allowed to speak, uh, Travis Harmon out of Miami, Florida, nice to kind of share. Um, I know I coach high school football and we're not really allowed to train right now. So I'm big on my, on my players of visualizing themselves succeeding. So when we go over plays and things of that nature, we go over the formation, but I'm really big on visualize, like for them making the line calls and visualizing themselves succeeding and going over the things. So we're training a lot mentally 
and that's yeah. played a big part of even when I do um, practice with them during the season, after practice, I tell them when you go home, you may not be done training. You know, go home and visualize yourself succeeding. Make your line calls. Go through the whole game in your head. Um, and that's just that's that's the big thing I'm on. You know, even with when you're dealing with injury, um, yeah. let's say you you're not injured and you kind of you know you're no longer competing because you know you graduated or whatnot. Find little things, to, you know, find little ways to compete when you work out with yourself. Take on a new challenge. Like if you were a track runner and you're normally a sprinter, you know, try long distance, try cross country, you know, things of that nature. And that kind of keeps a competitive fire going. Yes, you're exactly right. Find somewhere else that you can focus that energy and and do something and be do something positive with that. You're exactly right. Um, there's so many there's so many things out there, so many different ways that we can uh uh, work, continue to, to, to work and maintain uh, our, uh, our um, what am I trying to say? Better uh, edge. Yes, but so there, there just, there just so, there's so many ways to do it. And <clears throat> if we just take the time, because sometimes we get, so, we, get more, we get so impatient with ourselves more so than anyone else. They think we're doing fine. We're, 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 you know, we stress, we stress ourselves out a lot of times, but we just need to be patient, take it a day at a time, set goals, and go from there, and just, yeah, and just, just take it one day at a time. Thank you for those for that information. Also, I have a question if you don't mind me asking. Um, oh, I happen to study sports psychology for my master's degree. Like, what would you say would be the next step? Okay. You said what would be the next step? Yeah. What, yeah. What would you say is like the next step? Because then I, you know, I feel like I've gotten field experience because I've been coaching and I train kids. It just so happened I just went to study sports psychology for my master's degree, but it's mm -hmm. such a new field. I feel like I'm not really sure where to go next. You know what I mean? Like, what to to start applying and you know speaking or what well no you just okay so you just what what you just said and i mentioned earlier give yourself take your time because you said you 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 just started but you want to move you're ready to move on right now and that's that athlete inside you saying let's get let's get this stuff let's get this going right Be patient with yourself learn become comfortable with with that and then take the step, make, take, take the time to prepare yourself so when you go to make the next step, you'll be prepared. Um, and, I'm, and so I'm just saying, just be patient because you, you're, you're fired up and yes, and use that, use that energy you have and go and sign up as many courses as you can and be patient with yourself and allow yourself, allow yourself to, to to absorb all of that, and 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 then go from there. But you say, sound like you sound like you sound like you're driven. I've I've heard that somewhere before. I've, I've I met a guy like that before, not too long ago. Uh, myself, yeah, I realized that because <clears throat> sometimes you don't you don't realize that uh, you're more motivated than you realize until you get in that situation, and then when you press when you press. How do you act? That will determine whether you're successful or not. Don't beat yourself up. That drive you have, that drive you have, is going to be there to make you successful at all moments, whatever you decide to do. So, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, that question. Okay. Oh, I, okay. I just want to mention that uh, you must have played with uh, Big John Ayers from West Texas A&M. I don't remember off the top of my head. My memory isn't always the best. Uh, and where would that have been? Where would we have crossed paths? I, I'm from Canyon, Emerald, Emerald, Texas, West Texas State. Okay. The, uh, uh, his wife was one of, was my junior high coach. Okay. And uh, she was an all-state basketball player from from the region. And his daughter, of course, was a star at Texas Tech and uh, I know the family from the Panhandle. Okay, I no, I, I don't recollect any names right now, but uh, I, I, I did work with quite a few people, but I 
can't recall all the names right now. Yeah, he played for the 49ers. Yes. That was one that was Tampa Bay, San Francisco, and uh, Arizona. Yes. Uh, so let, let me let me take one of these questions here on the side. Uh, this question says, Christopher, you said you had many surgeries. Uh, were, were you playing uh -huh. in or were you playing in or did you keep playing? Okay. <clears throat> yes, after I had, I had surgeries after my second, second and fourth year. Uh, and yes, I was able to, I was able to come back. It was, it was just the injuries I had when I tore my, tore my Achilles tendon that, that took me out of the game. Otherwise, I'd still be out there trying to run and play right now if I could. But uh, sometimes it's good to uh, have someone who's looking over you and can, uh, so you won't go out there and hurt yourself because you get, as athletes, we decide, we know, or we feel we can do, we can deal with anything. So, yes, I, as I said, I had those surgeries over the years. Okay, let me look at one more here. Okay. What are your What are your thoughts? Where do you go? What are your thoughts on group counseling sessions with just student athletes to discuss and resolve these present challenges? I think I think group counseling group counseling um, would, would be beneficial to a lot of students um, um, once, they, once they understand once they understand what it's all about and the, the professor uh, explains to them what exactly they're trying to achieve and how they're going to achieve it I think it's very they very uh, it's very beneficial um, I know it helped, it helped me out um, just to have someone that I could go to and share everything, get all that stuff out that I've been holding me and holding back. It helped me quite a bit. It allowed me to grow and, and let go of some things that I've been holding on to for years. So I think it's, it's a very good idea. Okay. And one more question to read from here and then I get back to the guys over here. Uh, Okay, and this is from Tamara. Mm -hmm. All right, you have talked about success. What would be your own concept of success? My concept, my, one of my concepts of success would be uh, possibly uh, helping someone today in the conversations we're having today to help someone, if not, with me to go out and talk to someone about issues that they're having that they've been holding back and holding in. Uh, I know a lot of times we we feel not ashamed, but we feel embarrassed to go and talk to someone about about different things. Then you finally find someone you feel comfortable enough to share those thoughts with, then that will help you tremendously. So, um, yeah. That, that, that would be a, a thing that's on my mind. Uh, did anyone else have a question here? Or I'll go back to, uh, I'll keep answering. What else would you consider a success? Okay. What else would I consider a success? Uh, the, fa <clears throat> the fact that I was able to admit because being able to admit that you're uh, being able to admit that you're avoiding you're avoiding certain things uh, is a big step as well. Um, and even and even with, with just. Uh, with family, different things that come up depending on the age groups you're, you're, you're speaking of. Um, 
those you have to take those into consideration as well. And it doesn't have to be the great. It doesn't have to be a huge, uh, a huge uh, issue that you've dealt with. It could be something small. The smalls are just as important sometimes if they if you allow them to add up and you don't talk to someone, you don't share your thoughts. So. Um, uh, let's see. Do any of you have any other any questions right now? Any? Okay, let me see. Let me look over here. Okay, camera. What was the most difficult time in your career? What was the most difficult time in your career and how did you cope with it? Uh, Again, the most the most difficult time in my career was uh, after I, I had major surgery on my leg, and uh, <clears throat> it just seemed to take forever for me to get be able to get back on the field and run and be able to play up to the level I need to play and get back on the field. Um, and I think all athletes are, all athletes go through that at some point if they not what. If they, uh, when, if and when they uh, incur injuries, uh, we panic. We think we're done, but sometimes you just have to be patient with yourself and allow time. Sometimes it does take just take time. Sometimes with your physical therapy, that will help you as well. But you just have to learn to be patient with yourself. You have to learn your body. You have to learn what works for you. You may have a friend who went back and he got involved right after he got back he was he was running around everyone's not the same um but that doesn't mean you can't recover you just have to be patient and get to know your body and go from there any any other questions here okay let me see what else is over here what kind of what kind of Nikki, what kind of therapy is available to NFL players? Well, NFL players can go in depending on what level they are. If this is an ongoing thing that's bothering them in high school, college, or they just started at the college level, um, there's um, there's many many different. Uh, uh, professors out there who can help, who can help you understand, help you un help you understand what and why you're feeling those, why you're possibly feeling those things. That's the most important thing that they help you understand what you're going through, and understand what you're feeling. And uh, okay, was well, okay to the NFL. Well, the NFL has. <clears throat> And they have they have psychiatrists for you to work with. They have someone if you have issues at home that you can talk to. They, it just depends. They have almost almost all the needs that you could possibly come up with. They have someone that you could you can go and talk to, and a lot of times that same person can cover uh, a lot of different uh, issues. But they will allow you if you go in and ask you have to ask uh, ask and they can set you up with private sessions that are of course confidential uh, but they they i've seen a lot of friends that uh have gone through uh, different transitions and uh have had successful results with with uh with the meetings that they were attending Oh. Good help. Oh, okay. Are there guidelines? Here's a question from Ryan. Are there guidelines on how much, how much level of involvement coaches should be a part of a player's life, which affect their performance? Okay, as athletes. Coaches are coaches go through uh, uh, learning uh, 
coaches take uh, classes as well. And we learn how to deal with some issues uh, that students have, but we're not, not all, not all doctors are, I mean, all coaches are, not all coaches are qualified to handle everything that goes on. So sometimes that coach needs to be aware and able to decide that this, this student, this student athlete needs to go and seek help, help else, elsewhere. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of times our coaches, male or female coaches, uh, can help us get through a lot of uh, significant issues we may be having. Or after we talk with them, we may realize they're not as bad as we thought they were. So, um, that'll be my thought on that. Um, I just want to ask a question. My name is Nagisa. I don't know. <laughs> How are you doing? Hello, Chris. I'm all right. Thank you for sharing. I just want to ask a question. This is more on, on the feeling and, and on the speed and the decision. Like, like when you, you, you're an ex athlete and I used to play, and when you had an injury, when you know this is a career threatening injury, how did you feel at that time? And how quick did you transition, like, like change your mindset? Oh, I got to transition now to another career. How did you go through that, just that, that space, you know? Yeah. Just getting, trying to get to a, to a mindset that will help me return to my sport. Is that what you want to know? Yeah. No, no. When you, when you got your injury, your career threatening injury, and you know this one is the injury I can't play anymore. Then oh. how quick were you to switch? Oh, I'm going to transition now to another career. How I know that's a big um, problem, mostly, you know. Well, how did you go through that? Yeah. I <clears throat> well, I listened. I listened to the doctors first of all, and they would give me okay parameters and what I could and could not do, what how long this would last, how long it would take for me to recover. And then once I recovered because you know that some injuries are more serious than others. You, like, of course, the knee, we know, you know, we want to stay away from those knees, but once they get jacked up or once they are injured seriously, that may end your career, yeah. but you don't know. So you want to know how far can I push myself before I can, you know, decide whether I'm truly, well, or can I come back from this? You'll know, and then you have to be honest with yourself and admit, when it's time, but only use not no one else. Someone else can't just come and tell you, you can't do this. You don't. That's not how it works. Depends on how strong you want it, but at the same time, you don't want to put yourself in danger of getting or injuring even more and having that affect you for the rest of your life. So you have to weigh that in your head, and, and as you go on, as you go on training. You won't be able to lie to yourself for long because it's going to let you, your body's going to let you know whether you can continue or not. So, all right, thank, thanks for that. I just because I, I do, I do have a lot of, um, oh. like, I, I think, you know, athletics are very different because I'm from, of course, I'm, I'm in Canada now, but you know, mm -hmm. during my playing time, right? And, of course, there are places where they don't have the resources to get injury, and because this is their game, you know, sometimes they keep playing with the injury and they keep tearing, they keep damaging the body the more, you know. Not only does the body sometimes affect the mind, you know, and mm -hmm. sometimes you don't have those kind of uh, there's some there's some country, countries where you don't have they don't have that support like here, you know, they don't have the psychologist, don't have the doctor, or the physio, they just you know, and they just want to play, you know. And, and sometimes they damage their body more. And then even when they want to transi transition, there's no help for them to transition, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's something I wanted to share because you know, I played a little bit, I helped myself, but of course I moved on when I came over. I'm coaching now, I coach Fuso. Fuso mm -hmm. is what I coach. Um, mm -hmm. And I can't, yeah, I can't wait for the kids to come back. I, I know they have a lot of bottled energy, you know, mm -hmm. but, but I wanted to add that, you know, and because I know the challenge also is always how do one transition? Oh, this is my career, this is my life. I'm not injured, the body is gone. How yeah. do I switch now, you know? Yeah, so it was good. Thanks for sharing that, I appreciate that. Well, thank you for sharing that as well. Uh, okay. 
Okay, this is from Victoria. Does the NFL do a preseason questionnaire screening for mental health? Not, not necessarily. Well, that happens before before they um, uh, before you drafted, and then even after you drafted, before you come to before you go to training camp, the NFL will take you through different. They'll send you to see different different uh, professors that will ask you certain questions to find out where you are mentally. You, know, you can't always tell how tough you are, but they uh, <clears throat> will they will question you and, and ask you to find out uh, where you stand in on certain positions and, uh, and go from there. But they they do evaluate you once you are once you are uh, drafted and you start playing with it, with that organization because they want to know will this person be will this person work or are they gonna fold up when it's time for us, you know, to make a move, to be how aggressive can this, can this, will this person be? So yeah, they do, they do take steps to find out how sometimes how much, how much you can take. Yes, and sometimes they're gonna test you to see how much can you take. Sometimes, you're, you're, sometimes your teammates do that to you as well. But yes, they, uh, they do, they do, uh, well, not, 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 not screening, but oh, oh, well, no, not, not, not on a regular basis. But if need be, yes, it's available. It is available. Hey, Coach, I appreciate your time. Please don't worry about it. Okay. Um, how will sports psychology, how will, how will sports, sports psychology play its part on, its part on the new norm? Oh, okay. Okay. This is from Ryan. <clears throat> How will sports psychology play its role, its part on the new norm that's coming now after the, after the, the virus? How will psychology, okay. Psychologists, psychologists are not gonna totally change. They're not gonna change the way they apply. Their, their their knowledge. What they're going to do is start looking for different. They're going to start. They're going to look for different. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Mm -hmm. uh, different techniques, but different. Uh, they're going to they're going to have to look for. Uh, look for. Uh, I can't think. Bear with me for one second. Okay, get my thoughts together. Okay, uh, they're going to have to understand what could possibly be affecting the athletes because of this is the first, this is the first time this has happened to any of us, and now um, they're being bombarded, bombarded sometimes with the students coming in now. They're, they're afraid, they're, they're panicking, they're uh, worrying, you know, what's going on. And, and none of us really know the, the true answers to that, but he tries, he'll, he'll try to try to calm them down and give them as much information as he possibly can. And, uh, and then we'll go, for, and go from there. I'm looking at another question over here. Okay. 
this was related to transitioning after okay. Okay. sports. This is from Kathleen. To every, she said this is to everyone. Mm -hmm. I, I think you also get to a point that you don't have a choice. You need to accept that your body is breaking down and it's time to make a change. Some probably handle it better than others. Yes, that's, yes, that's true. And we talked a little bit about that earlier. Uh, everyone is different. How your body heals sometimes could be different, uh, but you just have to be realistic with yourself and uh, your physicians will uh, let you know whether this is something you should pursue move on and um, <clears throat> move on to something else. A lot of people, especially athletes and, and just people in general, don't want someone telling them what they can and can't. I mentioned earlier, but sometimes you have to listen to those who have the knowledge and they're telling you, they're looking at you and they're saying, you know, it was good while it lasted. You have more, there's more to your life than just being an athlete. And if we can accept that and move on, we'll be in great shape. Uh, question from Luis. Luis, as an athlete, you had psychological support. As an athlete, as an athlete, you had psychological support. And was, and what was your experience? Well, the support I got while I was playing was great because after I had my first injury, I thought initially that it was, it seemed so serious when I had the surgery, but as time went on, it, it didn't take me as long to heal. Little did I know I was going to be back in that position about 15 more times in my career, but <clears throat> you have to learn again. You have to listen to the doctors that you have and listen to what they're telling you and adhere to the, the process they're giving you to recover, to um, uh, get yourself out there on the field, wherever, wherever that field may be. Uh, so you learn, you have to learn to listen. And I know I said earlier, don't let them tell you what you can and cannot do. That is true. No one knows how what you're driven, you're driven inside, but at the same time, they're looking at your body and they're telling you, this is what I see, this is what I know is going to happen. There's no if, ands, and buts. Then you, they'll tell you whether you need to continue, you should continue to do this or not. And uh, it's hard to hear sometimes, uh, but you have to listen to them. So uh, let's get on that. Okay. Well, I thank everyone for coming out and uh, being a part of this today. And uh, um, I'd like to thank Dr. Vasari for uh, inviting me and allowing me to speak speak to the, to the people today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and. Uh, to speaking with you again. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for uh, taking your time and explaining about uh, this topic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.